Hi, this is Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass with an afternoon update for Tuesday, September 15th. Okay, uh, not a ton to report here, but let's run through it as we head towards the afternoon session. It's 1.35 as I'm starting the video. On the SPY 30-minute chart, as you can see, uh, there hasn't been a whole lot of trading ops today. We had the gap up. And then the camp out uh, toggling between this uh, 342 and the open gap from this morning. So for this afternoon, the key levels to watch are this 342.50, which was a problem last time. If they can pop that, you got yourself along and you can look for 345. Now, of course, that decision you know to take that trade will depend on you know where it comes in the day and if you plan on holding you know overnight uh you know if it pops it at 3 30 this afternoon and you and you didn't want to you know hold it overnight there's no sense really trying to grab that for 30 minutes unless you think it's really going to go but anyways anything above three 42.50, uh, good to go long. But if it fails and comes back below 340.60, you're back in this gap, and I'd be looking for, you know, a gap fill to 338. Uh, hard to tell which way it's going to go. I mean, things look, you know, relatively strong, but it's just toggling here. So uh, those are your key levels, though. They're pretty well defined. Uh, Qs. Again, you got the gap up, came back a little bit, and has been testing this 280.25 level. If it can pop that and get up to this gap, then there's a good chance they can uh, fill this gap and then make a run for 286. On the downside, uh, I don't have it marked here. I think it's 277.75, something like that. But if we were to fall back in the gap or get rejected from this 280 hard, you could be short against that and then see how it reacts down at 277.75. Um, yeah, so we're right at that juncture where they could pop it or turn back away towards the end of the day in the in the final couple hours of trade. Definitely at a inflection point or you know objective level right here we've been there all day and they haven't been able to pop it yet but as they say pros close so if the pros want to take it higher they can certainly do that or if they want to back away they can do that as well so you'll have to judge it candle by candle on a short time frame and decide if you're going to hold uh, overnight or not uh, towards the end of the day, just like on SPY. Uh, IWM, gap up, gapped over this resistance level at 153.70, came back to tag it, came back up to this 154.5, and has not been able to punch through. If you got long anywhere in here, I think you're fine as long as this 153.70 holds. But if it breaks, you know, like we always say, back into a trading range, you would have an objective short then against uh, 153.70, 153.75, something like that, if they uh, decided to pull the rug in the afternoon and bring it back down. But uh, it's been pretty resilient. I mean, it, you know, popped and has held it. Uh, as it stands now, your target's 155. And as long as they stay above 153.70, I think the longs are good to go. Uh, just respect those stops this afternoon, depending on uh, which way they want to run it. Facebook, you know, had the gap up and hasn't done anything since. So if you're long, I think you need to hold this 73.20 level. Uh, you know, we've been sitting right on it here for several hours, so... It is a it is a key level if they can, you know, make a break above this declining 50 EMA on the hourly, 
then you could have a clear shot to, you know, 278, 279, something like that, and possibly fill this gap up to 280, 250 tomorrow. Have seen a lot of, you know, positive order flow on Facebook looking for higher prices. So you've got that, but price really hasn't responded yet. Uh, everything seems to be stuck uh, at a certain level here this afternoon. Same thing with Apple. If you're not in and it pops 118, I think you're good to go. Uh, price has come up and is above these uh, EMAs, you know, the 8, the 20, and the 50. But it's up against resistance here at 118. Have seen a lot of positive uh, order flow. As we speak, the Apple event is streaming right now on their new products and stuff. So I don't know if that'll be, you know, buy after it concludes or sell, but it's definitely at an objective level. Uh, 118, as long as we're below it, you can st you can be short Apple against 118 while we're below, but if it were to pop above, you've got to get uh, bullish right away for a run up to uh, 123 would be my uh, guess for that heading up. Amazon stuck in the weeds. I don't think there's really anything to do inside this wedge. Uh, they again they gapped it higher. Then they sold it off, and now they're kind of grinding back higher again. That's been some rough trading inside here the last couple of days, uh, unless you're really nimble on a five-minute chart, you know, going back and forth. That's really not a trade I want to, you know, get involved in. Now, if they were to break out above this downtrend line, then you've got something to work with looking for a move up to 3200 and then 3250 on the upside but if they fall back down below this 3151 again you know just like this morning they came back into this 3100 level so a lot of choppy trading on on Amazon here uh, be careful there's doesn't look like a ton of opportunity until we get you know, a decisive move either out of the wedge or, you know, if it ends up rolling over. So that's that's all looking into the future. But on the downside, I think 3151 would be a level uh, to shoot against. On the downside, if it were to break, uh, that's, you know, you got $50 there and then you got another 50 down to the bottom here. So that might be worth a try depending on how aggressive you want to be. Microsoft did break out. They popped it this morning, came back and back tested this uh, wedge trend line. And now they're kind of grinding higher, not doing anything too impulsive, but they broke the wedge. You've got uh, positive uh, trending momentum here on PPO. And notice they have broken out on the RSI. They took out this downtrend resistance. So I think you can be long Microsoft here, you know, with a tight stop down here towards uh, uh, 20775, 208, depending on how tight you want to run it. Uh, it's got to clear this 50 EMA, but I think, I mean, price has done what it has needed to do so far which is to break out of this wedge and so the bulls have it we just got to see if they can go up here and take out this 213 to really give it room to run and you know for me that would be my next buy point it's 213 or decision point if it comes up here and you know gets rejected as it did here then you know it was just kind of a false breakout come up and then down but that's your next point and i think if you're long now uh you can stay long against your stop and see if it can get up to uh 213. google 
kind of like the Amazon story. I mean, kind of been some hard trade and not a lot of stuff to do here. Uh, if you are long, this 1538 has to hold. If it doesn't, then of course, just like yesterday, we come down to this uh, 1505, 1510 level. And as long as it holds, the door is open to this 1567 level where it ran into trouble the last time. So if you're long, you can stay long. Just respect that tight stop and uh, see how they close it. So that's that. Netflix has given a, a nice trade today. If you had bought this break of 485, uh, actually, I was I was offline this morning. I had connectivity issues, so I don't I haven't looked at the five minute time frame to know exactly how this looked. But it's a good it's a good study for breaking a key level from below is usually a buy, you know, with a stop just below. So once they popped 485, then you were good to go up to the next level, which was 495, spent a couple hours consolidating below, and now has bro broken above. So if you're long, stay long, move up your stops to just below 495, right in here and look for 505 and if they can push to that level and then pop above then of course you can raise your stops up to uh you know 500 something like that so if you jumped on this trade early well done uh even if you missed that if you if you hung with it and stayed on it you could have bought here uh on this break above uh 495 at this uh, pivot point and now you've got a nice start to a long trade looking for 505 so uh, Netflix has given some nice opportunities today uh, Tesla gapped higher came back for a little retest if you weren't in that would have been a nice place to try to stab it along and they're just they're just running with it i was completely wrong on this uh it looks like they want to take it higher i have seen a lot of bullish order flow looking for 500 by friday of course those are i don't even want to say it a low probability trade uh, i don't know if i can even say that i mean the way they're pushing it uh, i've seen a lot of 460 strikes for friday uh, a lot of cheaper shots up at 500 looking for a retag of this high so if you had gotten in you know anywhere down in here on a break into this gap maybe that's been a great trade for you congratulations you're sitting pretty and uh job well done now i want to bring your attention this is a new ticker scpl I had never even heard of this before today and it popped up on my uh, order flow scanner it's an internet platform it's I guess it's called SciPlay SCI PLAY it's some type of internet platform had the run up had got to 16 and did a you know uh, a pullback and now has broken out but this look at this order flow just today they came in first for 3000 november 10 calls and paid up five and a quarter for that and then they came in not long afterwards maybe an hour and came in for 5000 of the november 15s at two bucks look at the average call volume 188 totally off the radar and now these guys come in with 8,000 looking for 
a move substantially higher from here. You know, I know, I know this is, you know, hard to buy after two big candles, but you got some big institutional money behind it. And I went back and looked. This IPO last year, last May, uh, its opening price was around $16. I don't know what the actual IPO price was. It was probably lower, and then they gapped it higher. You know, gapped it higher on the open, but that ultimately failed, and now we're back up at the IPO price. So, you know, if they can recapture this 16, I mean, it could be gone. We've got uh, bull cross working here on PPO. We've got RSI breaking above 50 after this uh, long consolidation. If you've got some speculative money, and that's what I would call this, I, I can support getting you know a few of the November 15 calls. They're probably, I don't know, 2 or 210 now. You'll have to take a look. Uh, this is probably a half hour old since I started the video. So take a look at that. And if you wanted to take a shot along with these big boys, that might be a really interesting under the radar play. And you know, if it makes a move and the masses start picking up on it, you might get some good FOMO action of everybody wanting to pile in an undiscovered name that's uh, making a making a move and a breakout. So I would call this a, like a pre-positioning, you know, getting in and see what happens. You've got plenty of time here. Uh, I would check the uh, earnings date. I did not check that. So go ahead and check that to make sure kind of, you know, know what we're looking at there. But I, I like this as a as a, um, a speculative idea and uh, you know if everything plays out the way these big guys think it's going to play out uh, could be a really interesting really interesting trade so I'll leave it at that if you like the content please hit the like button and uh, subscribe to the channel uh, over in the show notes, you'll see links to the blog and how to register for all my content. I'd really appreciate it if you sign up and we'll send you all the content directly to your uh, mailbox each and every day and during the day when I see stuff like this that I want to call to your attention. Okay, have a good rest of the afternoon trading. We'll see how they close it. This has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Talk to you next time.